All right, hello, dear viewers. Here I am at the tent here, back from the library today, and shopping at the Asian market here. And I'm reading in the book of Second Samuel now. It's the murder of Ishbosheth. So I just want to just point something out here as we read through the Bible here. The Bible records everything. It records the good, the bad, and the ugly. And here it records a murder of an innocent man here. And I just want to point this out that God doesn't approve of these actions, these wicked actions of men. But the Bible is simply recording of what took place. So it doesn't mean that God was behind this or that he approved of it. In fact, he didn't approve of it at all, so as we shall see. So I'm picking up in 2 Samuel chapter 4 in the King James Version Bible here. And when Saul's son heard that Abner was dead in Hebron, his hands were feeble, and all the Israelites were troubled. And Saul's son had two men that were captains of bands. The name of the one was Baana, and the name of the other Rechab, the sons of Rimon, a Beeroth, of the children of Benjamin. For Beeroth also was reckoned to Benjamin. And the Beerothites fled to Gittam, and were sojourners there until this day. And Jonathan, Saul's son, had a son that was lame of his feet. He was five years old when the tidings came of Saul and Jonathan out of Jezreel. And his nurse took him up and fled. And it came to pass, as she made haste to flee, that he fell and became lame, and his name was Meth Methibosheth. Hopefully I pronounce that name now. Some of the biblical names are pretty long, you know, so I probably butcher them a little bit, but not intentionally. So it says, And the sons of Rimon, the Beerothite, Rechab and Beanna, went and came about the heat of the day to the house of Ishbosheth, who lay on a bed at noon. And they came thither into the midst of the house, as though they would have fetched wheat. And they smote him under the fifth rib. And Rechab and Beanna, his brother, escaped. So you can see they just murdered this guy in cold blood as he lay on his bed at noon. It was probably a hot day, too. And, you know, I can relate when it gets hot. You kind of kind of get drowsy and sleep. And the heat just wipes you out. So that's what they did to this poor guy, this Ishbosheth. Okay, for when they had, for when they came into the house, he lay on his bed in his bedchamber, in his, in other words, his bedroom. Yeah, and they smote him, and slew him, and beheaded him, and took his head, and got them away through the plain all night, and they brought the head of Ishbosheth unto David to Hebron, which will prove to be a big mistake on their part, as we shall see. Okay, and said, said to the king, Behold, the head of Ishbosheth, the son of Saul, thine enemy, which sought thy life, and the Lord hath avenged my lord the king this day of Saul and of his seed. And David answered Rechab and Baana his brother, the sons of Rimon the Beerothite, and said unto them, As the Lord liveth, who hath redeemed my soul out of all adversity? And one told me, saying, Behold, Saul is dead, thinking to have brought good tidings. I took hold of him and slew him in Ziglag, who thought that I would have given him a reward for his tidings. How much more when wicked men have slain a righteous person in his own house upon his bed? Shall I not therefore now require his blood of your hand and take you away from the earth? And God and David commanded his young men, and they slew them, and cut off their hands and their feet, and hanged them up over the pool in Hebron. But they took the head of Ishbosheth and buried it and buried it in the sepulchre of Abner in Hebron. David made king of Israel. Then came all the tribes of Israel to David unto Hebron, and spake, saying, Behold, 
we are thy bone and thy flesh. Also in time past, when Saul was king over us, thou wast he that ledest out and broughtest in Israel. And the Lord said to thee, Thou shalt feed my people Israel, and thou shalt be a captain over Israel. So all the elders of Israel came to the king to Hebron. And King David made a league with them in Hebron before the Lord. And they anointed King David king over Israel. David was 30 years old when, when he began to reign. And he reigned 40 years. In Hebron he reigned over Judah seven years and six months. And in Jerusalem he reigned 30 and three years over all Israel and Judah. So he was officially made king at this point here over the entire Israel is what the Bible is telling us here okay the capture of Jerusalem so and the king and his men went to Jerusalem unto the Jebusites the inhabitants of the land which spake unto David saying except thou take away the blind and the lame thou shalt not come in hither thinking David cannot come in hither Nevertheless, David took the stronghold of Zion. The same is the city of David. And I got a map in here. Hopefully it shows that here. The city boundaries of Jerusalem. Let's see. Let's see what kind of map I could hit. Jerusalem and the temple in Old Testament times. So, here's the city of David. It does show something in here. I don't know how good it is. We should see. So let me see here. Hopefully you can see this here. Okay. Okay, so you can see this here, hopefully here. I'm doing my best to focus on here. So you can see the city of David here on the south end of the city. This is supposed to be the Jerusalem and the temple in Old Testament times here. This is the map that's in this Bible here. This Hendrickson printing so you can see the Kidron Valley to the east. Uh, what's that valley there? The Central Valley. It's like, is that what that's a Central Valley there? The H Valley of the Son of Hinnom is to the south southwest there. So, okay, that's where they used to sacrifice the bad kings, would sacrifice their sons and daughters to their idols there in the Valley of the Son of Hinnom. We will read about that later as we get into the book of the Kings. But right now we're just looking at this the city of David. That's what he captured from the Jebusites. So that's what we're reading about right now, dear viewers. So let's continue here in the scripture. The Holy Bible here. Okay. So we're in the historical books. These are like the his, these are the historical books here in the Old Testament. Okay. 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 Verse seven says, this is chapter five of Second Samuel. Nevertheless, David took the stronghold of Zion. The same is the city of David. And David said on that day. Whosoever getteth up to the gutter, and smiteth the Jebusites, and the lame and the blind, that are hated of David's soul. Notice that, that are hated of David's soul. He shall be chief and captain. Wherefore they said, The blind and the lame shall not come into the house. So David dwelt in the fort, and called it the city of David. And David built round about it from Milo and inward. And David went on and grew great, and the Lord God of hosts was with him. And when it talks about the Lord God of hosts, it's talking about armies. Yeah, the word host means armies. So it's kind of like a military term, one of the titles of God. Then it says, And Hiram, king of Tyre, sent messengers to David in cedar trees, in carpenters, in masons. And it's not talking about Freemasons now, folks, so. And they built David in house. And David perceived that the Lord had established him king over Israel. And that he had exalted his kingdom for his people Israel's sake. So notice it's called Israel 
God's people. So people don't like Israel. Well, the truth is they have a problem with God. Then. And David took him more concubines and wives out of Jerusalem. Remember that God is not necessary. He's not approve of, approving of these kind of things like the multiple wives, the polygamous wives. And so God is not approving of this now just because it records it here in the scripture. Because God's plan, original plan, was one man, one woman for life. And Jesus confirmed that in Matthew chapter 19 when he was questioned by the Pharisees about that very matter. So it says, And David took him more concubines and wives out of Jerusalem after he had come from Hebron. And there were yet sons and daughters born to David. And these be the names of those that were born unto him in Jerusalem, Shamua and Shobab and Nathan and Solomon, Ibhar also and Elishua and Nepheg and Japhia and Elishama and El Eli e Eliada and Eliphalet. So remember, God is not approving of plural marriages. It's just recording like the good, the bad, and the ugly. Even records the Bible. Even records the 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 bad things that even the saints did. Like David, he was a man after God's own heart. But the Bible doesn't gloss over his faults or his sins, you know. So it records everything, like the good, the bad, and the ugly. So just kind of keep that in mind as you read through these Old Testament books here. That doesn't mean that God is approving a plural marriage or polygamy, as we call it. Poly means many, of course. I think most people know that. Okay, it says, the Philistines defeated. But when the Philistines heard that they had anointed David king over Israel, all the Philistines came up to seek David. And David heard of it and went down to the hold. The Philistines also came and spread themselves in the valley of Rephaim. And David inquired of the Lord, saying, Shall I go up to the Philistines? Wilt thou deliver them into mine hand? And the Lord said unto David, Go up, for I will doubtless deliver the Philistines into thine hand. And David came to Baal Perazim, and David smote them there, and said, the Lord hath broken forth upon mine enemies before me, as the breach of waters. Therefore he called the name of that place Baal Perazim. Hopefully I'm pronouncing these names right. I don't know. Am I? That's a kind of flying flower on me. Okay. Okay. And there, and there they left their images, and David and his men burned them. Their idols, their little idols that they carried. Remember, they were pagans, heathen, so they worshipped false gods and, 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 and under the form of the idolatry. Okay. And the Philistines came up yet again and spread themselves in the valley of Rephaim. And when David inquired of the Lord, he said, Thou shalt not go up, but fetch a compass, compass behind them, and come upon them over against the mulberry trees. And let it be, when thou hearest the sound of a going in the tops of the mulberry trees, that then thou shalt bestir thyself. For then shall the Lord go out before thee to smite the host of the Philistines. And David did so, as the Lord had commanded him. And smote the Philistines from Geba until thou come to Gaza, bringing the ark to Jerusalem. Again, David gathered together all the chosen men of Israel, thirty thousand. And David arose and went with all the people that were with him from Baali of Judah to bring up from thence the ark of God, whose name is called by the name of the Lord of hosts that dwelleth between the cherubims. And they set the ark of God upon a new cart and brought it out of the house of Abinadab that was in Gibeah. 
and Uzzah and Ahio, the sons of Abinadab, drave the new cart. And he brought it out of the house of Abinadab, which was at Gibeah, accompanying the ark of God. And Ohio, so it looks almost like my home state, Ohio, Ohio, which is spelled with an A, Ohio went before the ark. And David and all the house of Israel played before the Lord on all manner of instruments made of fir wood, even on harps and on psalteries and on timbrels and on cornets and on cymbals. And when they came to Nacon's threshing floor, Uzzah put forth his hand to the ark of God and took hold of it, for the oxen shook it. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against Uzzah, and God smote him there for his error, and there he died by the ark of God. And David was displeased, because the Lord had made a breach upon Uzzah, and he called the name of the place Perez Uzzah to this day. And David was afraid of the Lord that day and said, How shall the ark of the Lord come to me? So God would not remove the ark. Wait, let me read this again. So David would not remove the ark of the Lord unto him into the city of David. But David carried it aside into the house of Obed-Edom the Gittite. And the ark of the Lord continued in the house of Obed-Edom the Gittite three months. And the Lord blessed Obed-Edom and all his household. And it was told King David, saying, The Lord hath blessed the house of Obed-Edom and all that pertaineth unto him because of the ark of God. So David went and brought up the ark of God from the house of Obed-Edom into the city of David with gladness. And it was so that when they had bared the ark of God, okay, and it was so that when they that bared the ark of the Lord had gone six paces, he sacrificed oxen and fat legs. And David danced before the Lord with all his might. And David was girded with an linen ephod. So David and all the house of Israel brought up the ark of the Lord with shouting and with the sound of the trumpet. And as the ark of the Lord came into the city of David, Michal, Saul's daughter, looked through a window, and they saw and saw King David leaping and dancing before the Lord, and she despised him in her heart. And they brought in the ark of the Lord and set it in his place, in the midst of the tabernacle that David had pitched for it. And David offered burnt offerings and peace offerings before the Lord. And as soon as David had made an end of offering burnt offerings and peace offerings, he blessed the people in the name of the Lord of hosts. Remember that title, Lord of hosts, is talk about the Lord of the armies. Host means armies, you know. It's a military term for God, actually. And the Lord is spelled in all caps to all capital. So that's talking about Jehovah there. Talk about the one true God of Israel dealt among all the people, even among the whole multitude of Israel, as well to the women as men, to every one a cake of bread, and a good piece of flesh, and a flagon of wine. So all the people departed every one to his house. Then David returned to bless his household, and Michael, the daughter of Saul, came out to meet David and said, ah, oh, here we go, here's some criticism here. How glorious was the king of Israel today, who uncovered himself today in the eyes of the handmaids of his servants, as one of the vain fellows shamelessly uncovereth himself. And David said unto Michal, It was before the Lord, which chose me before thy father, and before all his house, to appoint me ruler over the people of the Lord over Israel therefore will I play before the Lord and yet and I will yet be more vile than thus and will be base in mine own sight and of the servants which thou hast spoken of of them shall I be had in honor 
Therefore Michael, the daughter of Saul, had no child unto the day of her death. So we're going to leave off here at Nathan's prophecy here. And I will. Okay, viewers. It's a hot night. Okay, so I'm gonna say hi to the wife and the little Lang Lang and the family. My cousin Dan Marie and Ruben Bowden and Buckeye Boys. Josh Tater.